So the secret to really great looking clay renders starts with the right textures. And at Grayscale Gorilla, we take our materials very seriously. Like a year or two ago, we created some of the best clay materials in the world. And they're not just procedural clays that kind of fake thumbprints and all that sort of thing. They're absolutely real. We actually bought clay, we scraped it, we sculpted it, we scanned it. It's all perfectly optically captured. The normal maps are perfect, the displacement maps are perfect. And the reason that that's important is if you want it to feel like it's really handmade and really touched by someone's hand, it has to be touched by someone's hand. But that's just sort of like the beginning. There's some tricks that you can do in your scene to make it even more believable to make it look like clay. And I'm gonna show you some of those tricks today. Let's jump in. So I started in Figma and created a couple different designs for the type and wanted to do something that was a little bit fun and weird and would look have a lot of like area surface for the clay. So then I exported that out as an SVG and brought that into cinema. So the real trick to making anything look like clay is going to make sure that it looks like it's imperfect, that it's maybe a little messy. It, it's got some like organic qualities to it. So if I just if you look here, I've got this whole remesh system. I'm just going to walk through this one by one. So this is all going into a volume builder. And that's really the secret for doing uh, clay text is using the volume builder. And just volume builder in general for making stuff look like clay is really, really great, especially when you pair it with the remesh at the end. All right. So I've got a uh, my SVG of my text coming in. And then I've got a shader field, which is going to be revealed here in a second when I turn on the volume builder. So the volume builder, if we jump into that, we can see we've got our SVG file at the bottom. Then I'm using this SDF dilate and erode to basically make the whole thing uh, creep in a little bit so we don't lose this little hole in the A. Then our shader field is just subtracting a little bit of imperfection to make it look like that top surface isn't completely flat. And then I'm just doing an SDF smooth on top of the whole thing, right? And I'm using a pretty small voxel size, like a 0.5. We could go smaller, but then it starts to look a little bit too crisp. And we want to make sure those edges look soft like clay. So from then it goes into a volume mesher, which gives us this mesh. But as you can see here, it is very, very dense and it's not really what we want. So we, we're going to push that right into a remesh. And that remesh is just going to remesh that whole thing intelligently. And there we go. Now we have like a really clean mesh. From there, I usually will just grab this remesh and do a right click and say current state to object, which is what I have right here down below. So let's just hide this and let's just turn off all this stuff. So it's not calculating any of that. Let's unhide our text. You can see I rotated it down. Then the other thing that I did is because I'm lazy and I didn't want to um, fully UV everything, I did a pretty cheap UV on it. I essentially just took the uh, top and I took like a top selection and kind of relaxed those polys. And then I did an invert and relax those as well. Just so that, you know, I know the camera's not going to really go three quarter on this. It's going to always stay kind of above the text. So it just kind of made a lot of sense to do it this way. And triplanar can get sometimes weird around like uh, edges and corners and thing that, things like that, especially with displacement. So I wanted like really nice continuity over these corners. So I made sure I, I UV'd it as best I could. All right, so let's jump back into our startup layout and let's jump into our camera and let's go ahead and with that one selected on, let's go ahead and turn on the IPR and find a clay material and show you how, how I set this up. So I'm going to jump into Grayscale Gorilla Studio, which is part of Grayscale Gorilla Plus, where we have tons and tons of great clays. And my favorite clay collection, we have quite a few of them. So if you go over to Materials and Studio here, you can see we've got Clay Fine, Clay Rough right here, Clay Sculpting. But I'm going to grab something out of Clay Fine. So let's find one that we like, one that I think has some interesting details. This one looks pretty good. It's Clay Fine Sandy Brown 09. And with Grayscale Gorilla Studio connected, all I have to do is say Download Asset. And then we're going to immediately, once that's downloaded, send it directly into Cinema. In fact, let's select our clay. So we, when we send it, it, it assigns that material directly to the clay. All right, so here we go. IPR is cooking, and there we have it. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, clay mode in the, not to be confused with the clay material, but the clay mode in Redshift here. Um, I think our, our subdivisions are pretty good on the displacement. Let's try a different clay. Let's go with one that maybe doesn't have the scratches. Uh, let's try maybe one that has more of like the fingerprint stuff. Let's try this one. Clay Fine Sandy o Brown 02. Let's download that one and make sure that we delete that material over there while that's downloading. And we'll send this asset over. 
and we'll see how this one feels. Yeah, that looks pretty. This this one's got kind of an interesting um, like smudges and it's got some crusty bits, but maybe now we want to try something that's a little bit more uh, got some handprints on it or some thumbprints. Let's try this earthenware one. So let's go ahead and delete that one off of there and download this asset. All right, let's send that one over. See how this one feels. There we go. That's cool. It's probably a little too big. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just scale this by like 1.5 in the UV tag or the material tag. That's not bad. Maybe, maybe we went too far. Let's try 1.2, 1.2. There we go. Now we got some manhandled clay going on. So you can see just by doing that, it really helps. But another thing that I like to do, one of my favorite tricks is let's go ahead and just turn this material off. We'll just delete this material tag. And let's flip open this little displacer that I have here. So this is kind of my secret weapon when I'm doing clay materials is I'll turn on a displacer and I'll set that displacer uh, to noise and I'll use the, the uh, displaced Voronoi. And what this does is it's going to break up the silhouette of your object and almost look like it has like chunks carved out of it, just like you would if you were sculpting this out of clay. So this is kind of like a, a little trick that I picked up along the way for doing clay renders. So let's go ahead and put that same clay material on with this displacer on. And let's make sure we bring this back to 1.25, 1.25. And you can see it just kind of breaks up that silhouette and helps sell the whole clay vibe. It's kind of my favorite thing to do. This is pretty much it. This is how I set up clay renders. Um, and then to make it look like stop motion, I'm using our plugin signal uh, that you can get if you're part of uh, Grayscale Gorilla Plus to basically offset um, the UVs to change the seed of the dis this displacer and really kind of sell that whole stop motion vibe. So if I hit play on this, you can kind of see it's doing like a, it's changing the seed every 10 frames on our displacer. And it's also um, doing a little bit of camera shake on our camera to kind of make it look like stop motion. Let me go over the displacement settings. Let me just do that really quickly. OK, so let's jump into the Redshift tag. And I usually I kind of vary. Sometimes I'll just turn off screen space up at adaptive and just like subdivide it myself. But you can see this time I'm using screen space adaptive and I got a pretty low minimum edge length, which means that it's most likely going to get subdivided pretty heavily. In fact, up to six subdivisions. I also have started using this outer frustrum tessellation factor, uh, but basically means that if anything is not in the frustrum or it's out of view, it's not going to subdivide those areas. This can be a little bit troublesome sometimes, but for this, it worked out fine. Um, and then as far as displacement goes, this is obviously adjust to taste. I'm using a pretty, you know, medium amount of displacement. And then I've got enable auto bump mapping on. The other little hack that I like to do sometimes if I'm doing this as a still is I'll grab all of the textures in that material and I'll come over to adjust or advanced rather, and I'll change the filter enable to none. This is just going to make everything force it to be the highest resolution texture and be a little sharper. It's not something I recommend doing all the time, but if you're doing like a high res still, sometimes this can give you a little bit more fidelity in those textures. All right, so we did it. We did some clay. Uh, now I'm excited. I'm going to try all these different clays on this model and, and see what I can get. I'm guessing it's going to look pretty cool. <music> Okay, so hopefully you got something useful out of that, and I can't wait to see your clay renders. And if you're not a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, what are you doing? We've got so many materials, HDRIs, textures, models. You've got to join and check it out. We've got a whole free section. Join for free. Get 50 assets absolutely for free. Uh, try it out. See what you think. Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Use Studio. Bring it into Blender, Houdini, Unreal, Cinema, obviously. Have fun with it. Show me your clay renders. I want to see what you're doing with it. All right, till next time. See ya.